That's a shot in the dark. But that's the kind of crap that can start a bloody revolution. The price of wheat. I want to find out. In fact, I try to remember to look online and see what's been going on with the price of wheat in Russia. Because Ukraine has been controlling that. Could be as simple as that. I mean, I wish to God diplomacy had worked. This Zelensky guy, he needs to come out of and have a face-to-face -face with Putin. Well, afraid of dying? Don't be afraid of dying. That's the worst thing to do. Is have to take your body. We're not bodies. You've got to understand, you're not a body. None of us are. We have bodies. Like you have a car. But it's not you. It's not your essence. It's not your heart, your mind, your spirit, your soul. Okay? Who you really are. Who we really are. These eternal, cosmic, godlike creatures. Okay? So come out of hiding, Zelensky. You know, talk it over. Too many people are dying here. Innocent people. And look at the horrors. and The fear. It's horrible. Violence. God hates violence. So get to the table, man. Deal with this thing. Figure out what it's going to do. You know, take to satiate the Russian government, the oligarchs and Putin. I don't know, man. But, I mean, America's not going to nuke them for you. That's where this thing is headed. I mean, you can see this. the writing on the wall is... This is going to lead to third world war. You get NATO involved, Germany, and all this crap, man. Holy crap. We get America involved and China involved. Holy crap, man. This might be. It might be the apocalypse. Who knows where it leads? The return of Christ is imminent anyhow. At the precipice, so maybe this is the time in history. But I know it's a time when knowledge is greatly increased and people are going to be empowered by the knowledge. They're going to say, I was deluded. Because we could be deluded in two ways. On a personal level, that's, that's inward. Okay. And personal, we have to pray. Only God can help us come, come out of that kind of delusion. But the external, one's internal and one's external. That's the worldly one I was talking about. You know how we could be deluded by the world system. Because it's, it's a very powerful delusion. We want to believe. Somehow it all makes sense. And it's okay to just go out and be super financially successful and, you know, thumb your nose at the others. I mean, we all have our rationalities. And we, I understand how people fall into that trap. But it is a trap. Even King Solomon, with all his wealth, said, man, you know, you see so many people, as this, you know, fall into wealth too young. And it's a snare to the soul. You know, who said adversity makes men? And, and prosperity makes monsters. Victor Hugo, right? A philosopher, thinker. But yeah, I mean, this it makes people miserable. Then you look at all the people, the statistics of people that made gobs of money at the lottery or this or that, and next thing they're miserable and putting a bullet through their brain. People retire from their job, they've got nothing to do. They've lost, lost life's purpose. Their job gave them purpose. What do they have now? Bupkis. So <laughs> I'm telling you, man. Only God's got it all together, and he's the source, the counselor. That's the spirit of truth. That's the Holy Spirit of God. Okay, we're talking about getting advice from you on your knees. And then beyond that, all we could do is work together and say, we've got to heal society, and we've got to heal this division, and here's how we've got to do it. Okay, we've got to get rid of all political parties, one party. You're either for all Americans, not some. This is about unity egalitarianism, fairness, end of story. But get rid of all the parties that you're a bad person if you affiliate yourself with a party. No, that's yesterday, not anymore. We've evolved. We're, we're growing. We're moving on. We're progressing. We're just Americans now. And beyond that, we're just earthlings, right? Because eventually that's what's written in Scripture. That's what's given in Revelation talks about that. God's going to heal the nations. We're going to be one people, one race, one family, one species. Earthlings. Yes, friends, as the great Elvis Presley said, we've got to clean up our own backyard, okay? Let, let's set an example for the rest of the world. Let's just be Team America until we can be Team Earthling, okay? All right, I'm on to recent current events and other talking points. You know, last week I was talking about, uh, you know, free speech and how important I really believe in it, but I'm just torn because I understand people that say, you know, that word, that term, offends, that phrase offends me, okay? And there are terms that offend me too. So 
I think sensitivity is of utmost importance. Use a degree of decorum. Just be polite and sensitive. Respectful. That's all. If you like those things, then try to give them. You don't say words that you know to be offensive to somebody and just, you know, hope that somebody doesn't. But if they do, you just got to forgive them. You just try to let it go and don't make a big deal out of it. And just say, somebody will teach them. If, I, if they don't know yet, you know, they'll learn. But, uh, you know, in the book of James in the Bible, chapter 3, on taming the tongue, it talks about the tongue being a restless evil. And who hasn't experienced that? Who hasn't said something? That, what was I thinking? That was a stupid I make a bad hater, you know. So it's like, yes, you know, bite your tongue, right? You know, and James talks about, you know, as a metaphor, when a large forest is set afire by such a small spark. And that's what the tongue can do. And it says, furthermore, it says, a man that could tame his tongue is perfect. That's pretty cool. I mean, that says a lot for taming the tongue. And it starts with taming the heart and the mind, you know, the way we think. Because inev inevitably, invariably, the things that we harbor and cultivate in our hearts and minds, we end up speaking because we these are things we believe. They're mindsets, belief systems, our opinion. And sometimes we can be passionate and we're deluded. We're actually delusional, self-delusional. We don't, it's una, we're unawares of this often. I mean, we're inadvertently evil. A lot of times that's what happens. People, and we got, this is imperative to understand. We can be inadvertently, obliviously, subliminally evil. And that's why it's so important to have a personal relationship with God, prayer, intimacy, all that stuff. And recommend other people do that because, look, I can't help anybody at the end of the day. Nobody can. I can't. If I can't save your life, I can't do bupkis. Okay? And I can't. We got to, what is life? It's a lot more than the body. Okay? It's where we're going from here. Only you can make that choice. You have the, only you. Okay? But I recommend you choose an eternity in paradise and understand what you're saying there, what you are signing on to. A world entirely without any form of money. No way any inhabitant there can get an advantage over another. That must be our reality. This is an unreality imposed on us by evil, genius men that control the purse strings and their multitude of minions that go along with it. And they're either advertently or inadvertently evil. They just say, I know my values, and they're over here. Your values, Mr. Goody T shoes they could be over there mr virtue signaling all that crap that do goody good bs that you come up with you're over here you got it so fine just shut up you know i think about the male female the sexual paradigm i think god how beautiful this is so why did how did it get turned into something dirty so often you know but then i think original sin fall of man when when God has to ask Adam the first and second question, first, you know, uh, why are you hiding? And secondly, who told you you're naked? We're supposed to be oblivious to this. Could you imagine what a departure that is from the state of affairs, the status quo? I mean, who isn't keenly aware? I mean, especially if you're in front of other people when you're naked. I... After all, friends, they are just bodies, okay? But, you know, our, our essence is very well integrated into them. But to understand the male-female paradigm and the beauty of this thing and why God made it feel so beautiful, to give us a hint of why he created everything, not he, but he and her, as established in the first chapter of the Bible, male and female, God created us. And it's ecstatic, it's euphoric, it's so beautiful. You know, I mean, who doesn't understand that? How we came to be, we all came through ecstasy, God-given divinity. We're these cosmic creatures that are made in the image and likeness of God, male and female. I mean, I am so glad that as a man, I mean, the best part about being a man, right, guys, is women. I mean, it's like it would be so boring and dull and hard just not to have women Okay, it, it'd be awful. But women, I mean, it's just, they're the reason to be, 
to live. And that is, in fact, I mean, every man came through a woman. The whole paradigm is just so beautiful. And God made it so perfect the way we're integrated, the male and female, and how they fit together and like this perfect puzzle. And you could never improve on God's beauty and the way he does things. And I just think it's wonderful. But listen, friends, I got to leave it there. And God bless everybody. Have a great day. Have a great eternity. And try to be nicer and nicer and nicer and nicer. And respect people. If you like respect, live by the golden rule. Right? Treat others the way you want to be treated in all your affairs. As a brother or a sister, a mom, a dad, 